Well, the eighth most populous country on the planet is going to polls in a matter of few hours and Bangladesh is all set to conduct nationwide parliamentary elections. Nearly 2,000 candidates are vying to secure their seat. Um, let us get you at, at speed with all the latest updates from Bangladesh. Now, in the latest Bangladesh's chief election commissioner addressed the media to ad um, about poll concerns in the nation. Listen in. Election happens sometimes turbulently. It is not always uh, as peaceful as, uh, what should I say, uh, that serene atmosphere doesn't prevail. We have engaged a lot of law enforcing agency people who will be maintaining law and order. And polling stations are all set. All materials have been sent to the police polling stations. And regarding political violence in the nation, Beyond's principal diplomatic correspondent Sidhan Sibyl spoke to the Information and Broadcasting Minister Mohammad Hassan Mahmood. Listen in. To see the violence, I mean, since October 28, uh, BNP and Jamaat Islami has been trying, they are doing violence and uh, they, are, uh, they are, I mean, carrying out an attack on the people, on vehicle, on train. Nearly 1.6 million people, half of whom are security personnel, will oversee the election. Over 119 million registered voters are eligible to vote in more than 42,000 polling stations. Sunday's voting comes amid an increasingly polarized political culture led by two powerful women. The current Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, is expected to come back to power and the former Premier, Khalida Zia, who is in opposition, is currently under house arrest. Amid the preparations, the opposition is seeking to boycott and disrupt the elections with a general strike. The opposition has begun a 48-hour nationwide strike and Khalid Azia's Bangladesh Nationalist Party and the other opposition groups are boycotting uh, the elections. They claim the elections wouldn't be free and fair under Sheikh Hasina. Critics have accused Sheikh Hasina of systematically suffocating the opposition by implementing repressive measures, security measures. The opposition has demanded Hasina to step aside and let a neutral caretaker government administer the polling. But the government insisted there was no provision in the constitution for such a move. This party claims that more than 20,000 opposition supporters have been arrested. The Sheikh Hasina administration has said those figures were inflated and denied arrests were made due to political leanings. Instead, the arrests were made. Uh, for criminal charges such as arson and vandalism. Troops have also been deployed across the country to assist uh, when needed under the supervision of magistrates. This is common practice in Bangladesh during general elections. About 300 foreign observers, including more than 70 foreign journalists, have been authorized to monitor and cover the election. And earlier today, I spoke to Professor Imtiaz Ahmed, Professor of International Relations, uh, University of Dhaka. I began by asking him how he saw this election panning out given the scale of violence and arson in Bangladesh. Listen Well, we have to wait uh, uh, for tomorrow. Uh, in terms of violence, uh, I think uh, since uh, we you know, map uh, violence uh, throughout Bangladesh and we have the largest uh, data on violence of last 12 years. Um, I have to say that the violence is relatively less, uh, although, you know, any death is, is bad, but compared uh, to 2001 election, which was held under caretaker government, I'm afraid that violence was really, really high. Uh, so compared to previous elections, uh, up until now, uh, we still have to wait. Uh, up until now, uh, I would say violence has been relatively less. So you say that violence has been relatively less, even though the opposition, of course, has asked for now that 48-hour strike as well. And the opposition says it will boycott the elections. Does that in any sense give, you know, Asina's perceived re-election win less legitimacy? No, uh, I'm afraid, you know, uh, their call for uh, strikes or hortals uh, uh, have not really materialized. None of their hortals uh, have materialized. Now, in Bangladesh, uh, if you really want to change things, uh, historically, we have seen that millions of people have to come out on the streets. And not only in Dhaka city, uh, they have to come throughout Bangladesh. Uh, and then only the stakeholders 
uh, or take uh, you know cognition of it and try to do something. I'm afraid uh, up until now, the opposition parties have failed to bring millions of people come out on the streets. And uh, as I say, the hotels have not really metalized. None of their hotels have metalized. Uh, you know, there has been you know some incidents here and there, but it's so negligible. You know, after all, it's the eighth largest country in the world. But uh, millions of people have not uh, come on the streets uh, to their side. And, and that has been probably the biggest weakness uh, of the opposition parties uh, thus far. Right. And how do you see uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's own career pan out, given the fact that she is seeking a fourth term in office? Um, and by large, her popularity on the global front remains for her adept you know, diplomacy. Uh, worldwide, she's seen as a powerful leader. Yeah, I, I think she she managed uh, the, uh, the global community pretty well. Uh, yes, uh, uh, she had, uh, or Bangladesh uh, government had some hiccups with the United States. But, uh, you know, given the fact that the whole world is transforming into multipolar world, and there are several polars in this, uh, you know, new kind of world that uh, we are witnessing. So we are not in the stage of the 70s or even early 80s where, you know, you had the unipolar uh, and, uh, you know, one particular superpower is to decide. Now, here you have several polars. So what I think uh, the Prime Minister has succeeded uh, in impressing upon particularly uh, three big countries, of course, India, and then China, and also uh, Russia. And of course, J Japan, I would also say, in, in many ways, uh, is with uh, this particular, uh, is with Sheikh Hasina's government. So on the whole, I think she has managed uh, pretty well Yes, uh, the United States, uh, uh, I think, uh, had some, uh, you know, uh, different way of looking at things. But uh, if you take uh, last uh, 48 hours or last three, four days, uh, some of the, you know, uh, you know, some of the news that are coming out from the United States and some of the published news, uh, it looks like uh, they have realized also uh, that maybe the approach that, that they took uh, did not really help. Uh, strengthening uh, democracy, it polarized uh, the major political parties uh, further. So I think they will be doing some course correction in the future.